Hi and welcome to the channel. Today we will unbox, benchmark, and also determine the right price of this last-gen colorful eye game RTX 3080 Ti Advanced. As a background, originally RTX 3080 Ti cost a whopping 1,200 US dollars, but actually more inflated thanks to crypto mining craze. For this, I bought it recently for 34,000 pesos, which is roughly in the price range of RX 7800 XT. Anyway, around the box, there's only a few marketing words that doesn't make sense, such as this eye game being the connection between eye and game, and its course slogan gamer.connection which best shows the brand concept. I have no idea what this box is talking about. Other than that, it says that it has joyful lighting effects thanks to optimized algorithm. Lastly, easy and efficient overclocking which I'll discuss later. Anyway, opening the box. So upon opening, you'd see another black box. And upon opening this black box, you'd see a small package here. Inside is a glove, which I will wear based on the script. This is sealed by the way, though it's my first time opening this. Not sure if this will fit though. I have uh, roughly big hands. This is actually nice. Looks nice. It has grip marks. It's a bit short, but, but okay actually. Uh, I'll, I get, I'll do both. Oh, it's already torn. So much for places. Moving on, there's a quick guide. Behind this thick foam padding is the GPU itself. And there seems to be a GPU stand here, but this is probably a screwdriver. And there's bits for it. It's a screwdriver. Anyway, here's the GPU itself. So obviously, the GPU has three fans and it has a fan stop mode, which is nice. And the middle ring actually lit up, which is pretty cool in my opinion. However, I find the middle fan behavior to be a bit peculiar in my opinion. I think that it's stopping. It has covers for the PCIe connector and the output ports. As for the dimensions, it is 316mm by 131mm. And it is a 3-slot GPU. As for the output ports, it has 3 display ports and 1 HDMI. You can also see a turbo button here. This is the normal mode and this is the turbo mode. Given that, I'm not sure if you can press this while you're using the PC. I tried pressing it while the PC was off and when I turned it on, Windows gave me a blue screen. It was also treated by Windows as a new GPU installed in the PC. Performance-wise, expect that you'd get around 5% gain. It has a backplate and you can see the thermal pads here already which is nice. This means that other than for aesthetics and rigidity purposes, the backplate can help to dissipate the heat from the PCB. As for power, it requires three 8-pin PCIe connectors as its total board power is 370 watts, which is a power gluton in my opinion. Anyway, as for the temps while benchmarking FF15 for 30 minutes, the GPU temps average at 72.27 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 74.1 degrees Celsius. The hotspot temps averaged at 78.34 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 80.5 degrees Celsius. The memory junction temps averaged at 70 29.33 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 82 degrees Celsius. The fan speeds average at 69.59% with a max of 72%. In RPM, this is 2130 and 2225 respectively. While the fan was audible, at least it made the temps acceptable. I also like that there is just a 6 degrees Celsius difference between the hotspot and GPU temps. This suggests a good mounting pressure. And as for the benchmarks... Looking at average gains and losses, at 1080p and 1440p, the 4070 Super is just slightly better than the 3080 Ti. However, at 4K, the 4070 Super is slightly worse. The 7800 XT is pretty much a loser at this point. Though, do note that I tested this in turbo mode, which is 5% better. So basically, this will roughly be at par with 7800 XT in non-turbo mode. So to answer the question on how much this should cost in 2024, I think the base models of 3080 Ti should be cheaper than the RX 7800 XT at 470 US dollars, while OC variants could be at 
par with RX 7800 XT, which is at $500. While 7800 XT is generally weaker, it is only by a bit. And 7800 XT has more VRAM for a small future proofing. It is also 100 watts more power efficient. With the power consumption alone, I think the 3080 Ti should be cheaper to offset the power consumption bills. As against 4070 Super, other than power efficiency, the 40 series has newer RT cores, which means faster RT render, newer DLSS as well. However, the 4070 Super lost in 4K, which is kind of expected as the 40 series in general chipped out on memory bus width, making it slow to access the VRAM which is essential in higher resolutions. Though given everything, I still think that the 3080 Ti should be cheaper than the 4070 Super. On Colorful's iGame RTX 3080 Ti Advanced, it is pretty good in my opinion. I don't have many complaints other than having audible noise. I like the size as well as it's not that big and can fit the likes of S400. Anyway, that's it for this video. Do let me know in the comments down below on what you think of this GPU. Thanks for watching. Do like or dislike and subscribe for more unboxing, SFF builds, and benchmark. Bye! Gamer.connection, which